And then when I uh, got to college, I uh, had a really great pastoral care and support system put in place just before it was cut. Um, and I was given the motivation and the sort of opportunity to go to university, which I have, um, studying in Bangor University. And whilst I was there, I went and joined the Students' Union and with the support network that I had there and the sort of financial help that I had, I was able to get involved politically um, and went from being just a disability sh uh, advisor for the Students' Union to a disability representative from Bangor to go to the national campaign and then from there I got elected to the NUS Wales position. So, uh, yeah. I think what I'm most scared about is that the uh, majority of disabled students are going to university uh, without disabled students allowance anymore. Band 1 and Band 2 have been cut. Uh, this is vital support, so this will cover um, ability to get around university uh, from like taxis to sort of transport to um, assistive technology such as a laptop. They're expected to pay, I think it's something along the lines of £200 towards a laptop. Now when I started university I didn't even have 50 quid, let alone £200 to pay for a laptop. Um, it's really just the financial burden of being disabled is being passed on to the university and through the university the student because the university is going to be looking to save money and within education students as one of my uh, really good friends Ryan Magoo has been on national TV to say people with disabilities choose an institution to go to university not because of how good it is for their degree like most students would do but how accessible the campus is and how friendly the disability services are and whether or not they'll get the support that they need to continue their education through the three years, through the four years, and not start university, start with a huge amount of debt, and end up having to drop out because of their disability, and because of the, the fact that the institution that they went to wasn't as accessible as it is necessary for them to achieve the grade that they deserve, instead of the grade that they get. The uh, majority of issues that affect disabled people in society is based around attitudinal issues. Um, I know that um, a, a survey done by Scope a couple of years ago found that the biggest barrier that people with disabilities, uh, such as myself, face is attitudinal. It is uh, businesses and shops, it is high streets and councils and support networks via the government and the way in which we're treated within mainstream media that makes us feel not included within society and makes us feel alienated. It's, a, it's an amalgamation of issues that is really down to the attitude that both our government has and society has, which is to say that financial support for people with disabilities is seen as a burden when it's not. It should be seen as a helping hand until we get to a point in society where there is no access issues, where we've included people within society. I think the, my biggest priority for the UN committee to recommend is the complete reversal to austerity measures for people with disabilities and the complete scrapping of assessment-based benefit um, system. The benefit system is not working for the government, it's costing them more. It's not working for people with disabilities because they're being denied the support that they need. And the assessment process itself breaks our human rights. If there's one thing I would say, it is scrapping assessments for financial help for disabled people and making sure that austerity measures have been reversed because they adversely affect disabled people, they adversely affect women with disabilities and ethnic minorities that fit into uh, different liberation groups. It is unfair on all of those people and all of those um, minorities to expect them to cough up and to suffer for the rest of society to feel a little bit better about the welfare budget.